I bet everyone knows this situation. You're chatting with your friends or even a stranger and the conversation turns to movies and series. About four seconds in, it already happens the first time. What is this actor called again? He plays in that, um, he plays in that movie. There's like a car chase. Can't think of the name. And isn't he married to that other actress? Uh, it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. Throughout history, this question has perplexed humanity. From the ancient Greeks to Shakespeare and probably even into the future. Or in simple terms, what is this guy called again? We all know the phenomenon of not remembering an actor's or actress's name or even the movie name altogether. Here is the neuroscientific explanation of why this happens. Just kidding, I have no idea. But anyway, I'm gonna solve this problem once and for all using AI. You're probably thinking, well, that's a dumb idea. Why bother when Google already does this so well? And you're kinda right, but how about I do it anyway and make it even better? Here's my plan. Somehow find a list of a lot of actors, maybe even sorted by popularity. Then save all their info like a short biography, their age, what movies they play in and also what they look like. This will become important. Shove all of that into a vector store which translates the data into numbers and lets me find similar items. So when I enter Tommy Shelby for example, it should give me actors that relate to Tommy Shelby, which is Cillian Murphy and the rest of the Peaky Blinders cast. And then finally display that info in a web UI that links to more info of the actor. So basically I want to be able to type in whatever I remember about the actor or actress and my app spits out the best matches. This seemed fairly straightforward, but as always I ran into a bunch of problems even scrapping the whole problem altogether at some point and starting anew. I learned a lot about new AI models and techniques and I'll share my insights with you right here right now. First of all, I needed to get the data. Luckily, there are a ton of different APIs out there that give me access to movie and actor data. APIs are like a menu in a restaurant. The menu tells you what's available. You order it, the chef prepares it, and the waiter delivers your food. There are probably about as many APIs as restaurants in the real world. I opted for the TMDB API and requested data on the top 5,000 most popular actors. Using some small custom scripts I wrote, I was able to save each actor in their own JSON object and requested some more info given their IDs. Here's where the first fun part starts that more or less morphed into a horror movie with only a somewhat happy ending. But no spoilers. So I noticed that the actors come with an image path. I wanted to be able to find an actor by just describing what they look like. So wouldn't it be cool to save all the images and use AI image captioning to turn each of them into a text description? Yes, that would be cool. So I wrote another short program that downloaded all the images and saved them as the actor names. By now, many of you are familiar with how tools like Midjourney, Dolly and Stable Diffusion can generate images from descriptions. The opposite is possible too and is often referred to as image captioning. I was hopeful that this would be my X factor. It wasn't. See, this is the action comedy go Jackie Chan. And here are the results I get from three state-of-the-art image captioning models. Disappointing would be an understatement. The problem is that to differentiate between the actors and actresses, I would need to have very rich and detailed descriptions of their faces. These models, however, are trained on a vast amount of different objects, people, landscapes and whatever else you could express in an image. I also tried a few other models that allowed for adding a prompt, so I could already give the model the info that this is a person and that I want a detailed portrayal of their appearance. None of this led to anything useful. As a last resort, I was searching for a specialized model trained specifically on faces. It took me a while, but I finally found a three-year-old paper with the title Face to Text, collecting an annotated image description corpus for the generation of rich face descriptions. This is exactly what I was looking for, rich face descriptions. In my follow-up, I not only stumbled upon a 200,000 faces data set, I also found a GitHub repository where someone implemented the face-to-text as a Jupyter Notebook. To give you some context about how niche we are right now, Stable Diffusion has about 100,000 stars on GitHub. The face-to-text one has two. I have no clue about how 90% of this Jupyter Notebook works, so fixing the gazillion errors I got took a long time. However, in the end it was working as intended. There simply is no greater satisfaction than working on a hard problem for a long time, nearly losing your mind 
and then it just works. Every programmer knows this feeling. Without this, I wouldn't write even one more line of code. Now the image captioning was rolling. Since I have 5000 images, this once again took a while. Long enough to go to the cinema and watch Oppenheimer. It was great. I rated 4.5 out of 5 atom bombs. So how do we fare? We went from this to this. Is it perfect? No, obviously not. But it's at least somewhat useful data that we can add to our actor objects. I was happy with my data and ready to embed it in my vector database. In my last video, I explained how this process works. Here, the biggest problem occurred to me. I just had way too little data and no real strategy on how to give importance to different parts of that data. If even a simple search like Forrest Gump gives me Tom Hanks as the sixth result instead of the first, I have a problem. Looking for Tommy Shelby and Cillian Murphy is way down the list. Some of the others are part of the Shelby family like Helen McCrory, Finn Cole and Paul Anderson, but the order is not what it should be. It did work in some very obvious cases like Iron Man gave me Robert Downey Jr. as the top response, but the approach wasn't consistent enough and I felt it was destined to fail. I would either need to create my own LLM with all kinds of data from different film forums, movie databases and more, or use my secret weapon. Not too long ago, in the mid of June, OpenAI updated their API with a feature called Function Calling. It's been two months and I'm honestly quite shocked how few people are talking about this. Because to me, this is one of the most powerful features that OpenAI could have ever released for their tool. It pretty much turns their API into the everything API. What it allows you to do is write your regular prompt like you would in ChatGPT, but then specify the exact format of the reply. So you get a structured JSON object instead of just text that could have all kinds of forms. Here's exactly what I did. My system prompt looks like this. You receive a description about an actor or actress. It can be a quote from a character he or she played, movie names or a description of the actor's personality or appearance or something else. You return a list of eight actors that could fit the description in descending order of probability. Just return the names of the actors. Always return only actor names, never character names. Then the variable user prompt is entered. And finally, I defined a getActors function that gets called. Here I describe my output format. I want one main actor as a string and an array of seven other actor names. Both are required. This works shockingly well and made me question why I even did all the other stuff in the first place. Now that I get this structured data from OpenAI, I can use it in my application however I want. Like plugging the names into other endpoints to get the actor information and then finally displaying everything in a little front end. This was the straightforward bit. With the data in hand, arranging it was a breeze. I chose to showcase the primary search result in this main view, followed by four other options below. So. What was the point of all this? Well, sometimes it's just about experimentation. I learned a lot from this project, especially about the status quo in image captioning and the limitations of a simple similarity search in vector databases. Learning with small projects like these is the most effective way to become proficient in AI tooling. I did the same in my video where I made an animation sequence from scratch, which involved about 10 different AI tools. And the end result was quite amazing to me. I suggest you check that out next and I'll talk to you soon about audio.